Hallelujah. Hello again. It's good to be with you again this week. I'm going to continue our studies on authority. <laughs> We're really teaching it line upon line and precept upon precept because because we're coming into this end time revival that's going to be the greatest revival that the world has ever seen the Lord has told us it's going to be even um, greater and more powerful than the book of Acts and we think oh my goodness how can that be because uh, book of Acts is pretty amazing but that's what the Lord has said and so if we're going and plus it's going to be an outpouring where the the prophet the fulfillment of the prophet Joel where the Lord said he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. So that means it's not going to be just the apostles or the prophets or the, uh, the pastors, evangelists, teachers, not just the fivefold ministry. But he's wanting to pour out his spirit, his Holy Spirit on, on you to, be the, to know the truth of it. We're going to look at a passage in Mark today where he specifically says there's an anointing for believers. That when the world sees this anointing on how Pastor Dave would say, Joe Public and Mary Wallpaper. It just demonstrates to them that well, Jesus is alive and this gospel is true. So I want to look at a, a start at it. If we're going to, so let me say it this way. Let's, let's start with the book of Acts. And for years I've known this and we've all, kind of, we've all known this. Listen. We've got to be preaching the same gospel that was the gospel in the beginning. What's happened over 2,000 years, the true word of God, the gospel, has been so watered down. I don't know that Jesus would put his seal of approval on very much of what's taught in many churches today. But, he, but the gospel does not change. God does not change. Jesus does not change. The word of God does not change. The gospel does not change. <laughs> Even the devil really does not change. But the good news about all that is we can change. And in this season, the Lord gave me an assignment to go back. To, well, that really starts with this verse. So let, let's just start there. Um, Mark chapter 16 and at verse 20. Now, this is the passage where he had commissioned them to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Those that believe will be saved and those that don't believe will be damned and these signs shall follow them that believe. They'll, in my name, they'll, these signs shall follow who? Them that believe. Believe what? This gospel that was to be preached in all the nations. And in so those that believe it, those that believe the gospel, in my name, he says, they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and many other things. If they uh, drink any deadly poison, it shall not harm them. On and on. There's so much supernatural there, but it all comes from preach this gospel or share this gospel or tell this gospel to everybody. But notice in verse 20, and says, well, after they heard this, and the Lord was ascended into heaven, it says, they went forth and preached everywhere. The, now notice, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Now, it's still the same today. He confirms the word with signs following. Who does it? Notice it says the Lord. And actually the word them is in italics in that verse, meaning it's not in the actual original language. Now it's not wrong to have it there because he was working with them in a sense, but he was only working with them as they went forth and preached the word. So let me read it like this. It, I remember when I first saw it, it impacted me a little differently. The Lord working with and confirming the word with signs following. Now the word Lord there is the Greek word kurios, K-U-R-I-O-S. Every time you use the phrase Jesus is Lord or he is Lord of all 
or God has made him both Lord and Christ. Every time you see that word Lord in the New Testament, it's that same Greek word. So there's no doubt it's talking about Jesus. The Lord, Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Jesus working with and confirming the word with signs following. Well, I thought Jesus was in heaven. Well, he is. Well, I thought it's the Father that does the works. Well, he does. <laughs> Because in John 17, he said that when you get born again, Christ is in you, but the Father is in him. <laughs> and, but it's the Holy Spirit that manifests the presence of both. More and more, we'll, we'll come to understand that the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells in him, but he dwells in us. So it is the Lord doing, the, he, he is confirming the word, but he's doing it. It's the Father in him, Christ in you, by the Holy Spirit. Uh, <laughs> see, there really isn't three gods, you know. He, <laughs> we could go all the way back to the Old Testament. Hear, O Lord, hear, O Israel, the Lord, our Lord is one Lord. There's only one God. But he manifests himself to us in these three parts. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Knowing God loves us and is all wise and he's trying to reveal himself to our finite brains, <laughs> to finite creatures. Well, we're infinite on the inside, but still are, are trying to understand. Apparently, this is the best way for him to represent himself, present himself to us. There's only one God. God in, but it's God in three parts. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now, we don't have to get all that technical. What we want is results. Again, I'm an engineer by training. I like, I like theories and I like, you know, scientific discoveries and E equal MC squared, but those are the scientist guys, you know. <laughs> the engineer is the one that comes in after they leave the room, picks up their notes and goes E equal MC squared, oh. I think I can make a toaster out of this that'll help people, or we can make, make a better mousetrap or something. In other words, it's got to have some practical results, and that's really what we're after. People are hurting. People are lost if they don't know Christ. The world needs Jesus. The world needs a Savior, and the Savior wants to manifest himself through his people. You are his people. And this, the pure, the, the, he works with the Word. And we've got to make sure that we are preaching the same word that they were preaching in the first century. If we're even going to have the same results they had, much less if we're going to have even more results. So he gave me an assignment of starting with the book of Acts, just start going through, through it. And every time that they would preach the word, see exactly what they were saying. Now, I've paraphrased these just a little bit for time's sake because you know I didn't want to keep you for three hours and we're not going to near get through the, the book of Acts but <clears throat> you're going to see a pattern right from the beginning of what really when it says they went everywhere preaching the word and the Lord was he confirmed that word that they were preaching he confirmed it with signs following well let's make sure we understood the word that they preached so if you have your Bibles you can turn over to Acts chapter 2 and I'm going to kind of summarize a little bit verses 22 through 41. It's a long passage, but I'm trying to draw out the essence of what did they preach? What is the word that they preached? Okay. So this man, that's Peter doing the, it, this is on the day of Pentecost. And after they'd heard him speaking with tongues, said this man, Jesus of Nazareth. Now notice how that's worded. Not, I mean, he, Peter knows as well as anybody knows that Jesus is God. Okay, he's God in the flesh. He is Emmanuel, Christ with us. But he specifically uses this terminology, Jesus of Nazareth. And he starts off saying this man. Jesus is God, but Jesus is man. He said about himself, he's a son of God. He is a son of man. He would inter, interpose those all the time. So Peter is drawing attention to the man, this man, Jesus of Nazareth, was approved of God 
by miracles, wonders, and signs. Now he's telling to them, but really you could say it to all mankind, you have slain, you killed him. But God has raised him up from the dead. David foresaw this as a prophet. He's talking about King David. Foresaw this as a prophet. Now listen, we are all witnesses. And of course, they were. Peter and the twelve and many others were witnesses, had seen Jesus after he was raised from the dead. Then he says, now here's the word. In other words, this man, Jesus of Nazareth, the one that was approved by God by, by miracles, wonders, and signs, you killed him. But God has raised him from the dead. God has made this same Jesus, this man, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. He repent and be baptized. Now he's talking to the very ones that crucified him. <laughs> repent and be baptized, which includes you, by the way which includes me, by the way, because he died for our sins, didn't he? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name, now he said, of Jesus Christ. Christ is not his last name. When he says Jesus Christ, every Jew there knew he meant Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus, the Messiah. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus the Messiah for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit the promises to you your children and to all that are far off now they received his word this word and were baptized about 3,000 souls not bad for your first preaching service <laughs> 3,000. Pretty good start, Peter, you know. Hallelujah. Now, notice the simplicity of the message. This man, Jesus of Nazareth, you killed him. But God has raised him from the dead. You're going to see that over and over again, the emphasis is Christ and him crucified. And then on the resurrection, that God has raised him from the dead. And then... The call to salvation saying repent see when he says be baptized in the name we don't have time to get in I've asked the Lord to help me just stay very narrowly focused today because but got to include this part well it, you're, nobody is saved by being dunked in water you're saved by being baptized into Christ and being baptized in water is an outward expression of an inward truth that baptism is a type of the grave. And when they lay you down in that, when they lay you down in the water, you're saying, I'm dying to my old life as a son of Adam. I'm dying to who I was before. Because the whole message is Christ is risen from the dead. See, he showed it to me like this one time. You know, you're trying to tell somebody about the gospel and preaching Christ and him crucified. You could say it to him like this. Say, look, have you ever lied? Uh, yeah. H have you ever cheated anybody out of anything just a little bit? Uh, yeah. Have you ever stolen any? You know, and there may be just a little bit. So, well, you're guilty of the whole law. You you've fallen short of the standard. And that's why the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So, well, you need to you need a savior. You, you, you you're a sinner, and of course, we've all done way worse than a few little things like that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so here's your choice. And you explain to them about Jesus becoming the substitute, the innocent Lamb of God, who had he who knew no sin, he became our sin. He paid the punishment we deserved so that we could receive his pardon. That's why it says, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. You can be, if you'll, if you'll accept that, you'll receive remission of sins, but you've got to repent. You die to that old life. That's part of the being why you get baptized. But then the same way God raised him from the dead, he raises you from a, 
from the dead species of Adam to a new creature in Christ Jesus. He said it to me like that. I still didn't say it the way he said it to me one time. Let's say a person is facing the end of their life. You know, you're facing the end of your life and you got, you got a choice. Listen, you can, you can die, go to hell and pay the price for your own sins for all eternity. Or God's son, Jesus Christ, die, see him right there? He died on the cross for you. You can either die and pay for your sins or you can accept the fact that he died to pay for your sins. But if you receive him as your savior, you receive him as your Lord also. And you become a new creature in Christ. But it's up to you. you. You can pay for your own sins, go to hell, suffer there for all eternity. Or you can receive Jesus who paid for your sins and live with God forever. The choice is yours. What do you want? When it's properly presented, I, I don't think hardly anybody would ever reject Jesus. I'll, I'll, pay, I'll go to hell and pay for my own sins. I'll, I'll, I'll reject the Son of God. How, how crazy do you have to be? <laughs> you know, that's just, that's just, I mean, God's love has made a way of escape for us. And it's a whole new life. But they, they would emphasize the resurrection of the dead. See, here's another way I saw it one time. If the gospel ended at the cross, and I thank God for that old rugged cross, you boy, I will cling to that old rugged cross. The, the, the lamb became the serpent on the pole. And if you behold him, like Moses lifted up the, the brazen serpent in the wilderness and all that looked, lived, you gotta look at Jesus on the cross and see that he became your sin. He, he took your sin. And if you look and receive him, you'll live, boy. I love that old rugged cross, but if, if, if the gospel ends, ended there, it ends in death. You, you're basically a forgiven dead person. <laughs> if, if the gospel ends right there, you're forgiven, but you're also dead. <laughs> because the, the cross, there's only one purpose for a crucifixion. It's not to hurt you, it's to kill you. You okay? If the gospel ended there, you'd be forgiven, but you'd be a forgiven dead person. But it doesn't end there. See, after three days, the price had been paid. God, the penalty had been paid in full. And God raised Jesus from the dead. Peter talks about it, said he was raised, and Paul, he was raised for our justification because the penalty had been paid and God quickened him to new life. Now Jesus himself has not only been quickened to new life, he has been glorified. He has ascended to the Father. He has received his glorified body and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is both Lord and Christ. He is, he is, he, he is the last Adam. And those that, everyone that believes on him, see, God didn't leave you in the grave forgiven. He raised you to new life. Ephesians says he, he quickened us up together with him. He raised us up together with him and seated us at God's right hand together in him. We are, we are, we are raised to new life. We are a new species that never existed before on planet Earth. The resurrection is so important. Thank God. The gospel doesn't end at the cross. There is a resurrection from the dead. We're not only forgiven, we're the sons and daughters of the living God. We have been born again. We are not sinful creatures anymore. We are God's inheritance on planet earth. We're, we're on the earth, we're, well, let's say we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Our citizenship is in heaven. Your birth certificate's in heaven. <laughs> You're a child of God. We're only on temporary assignment here. This short, I'm, I'm, I'm only 76, as my mother would say. <laughs> she lived to be 101. I'm only 76, but if I live to be 102 or 120, as Bronk has been preaching, if I live to be 120, that 120 years, James, the James in his book says uh, it's like a, like a, whew, it's like a breath. That 120 years is like the shortest measure of my eternal life that you could think of. Who, who in the world 
would want to pay for their own sins and spend all eternity in hell when just receiving the free gift of Jesus Christ you can be forgiven born again raised from the dead and spend your whole life your eternal life the rest of eternity spend it with God in a new heaven and a new earth oh my goodness the gospel is the most wonderful thing but there's a heavy emphasis, I notice, in the book of Acts, not only on the cross, but on the resurrection. Let's look at the next time. Excuse me just for a moment. <clears throat> a little bit more coffee. Thank God. Thank you, Lord, for coffee. <laughs> Let's go to the next chapter. Uh, let's say Acts chapter 3. And this is right after uh, Peter had he and uh, John had healed the lame man who now this guy was it's a birth defect he was born lame from his mother's womb and he was a beggar legal a legal beggar he, his place was at the uh, the gate of the temple called beautiful and he begged there every day everybody knew this guy he'd been there his whole lot you know or since the time he was an adult I guess and he he everybody saw him okay he, he everybody knew who this beggar was and I'm not going to read the whole thing because that's not the lesson today, but you've heard it. So the, the man was asking for money, and Peter says, well, silver and gold have I none, meaning he didn't have any on him. They're going to the temple to pray. Didn't bring his wallet, <laughs> purse, whatever they carried. He says, silver and gold have I none, ah, but such as I have. Wow. Such as I have give I thee. Stand up on thy feet. However, he said it exactly. He took the man by the hand, lifted him up, and immediately strength came into his ankles and his legs. He not only stood up, he was jumping and jumping. And everybody saw it. They knew it was a miracle, and they were astonished. They'd seen this guy there forever, begging. Probably had little bird legs. I mean, he's never walked on them. Never from his mother's womb. And now he's leaping and jumping, and the people had to be astonished. Now, picking it up here, because we're looking at the Word. Remember, the Lord working with and confirming the Word. That's what He works with. The Lord working with and confirming the Word with signs following. Well, this is definitely a sign. Now, watch this. Peter says to them, Why look on us? Why look at us? As if by our own holiness or power we had made this man to walk the god of abraham isaac and jacob has glorified his son jesus you killed him but god raised him from the dead his name through faith in his name has healed him before your very eyes now here it is again repent of your sins turn to God so that your sins may be blotted out and times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord do you notice again it's not only Christ crucified but God has raised him from the dead his name through faith in his name now see Peter was there when the day when Jesus said believers will lay hands on the sick and they will recover Peter was there way before that when Jesus sent out the 12 and one of the commands was heal the sick he didn't say pray for the sick he said heal the sick this and now Jesus has given him the, this commission go preach this gospel to every creature and he said all we studied this a few weeks ago all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me Therefore you go. It's delegated authority. Remember last week also when he starts off, why, well, why look on us as if by our own holiness or power? See, last week's message, we talked about the real righteousness of God, which is the righteousness of the perfect one that has been accounted to your, your account. Remember Paul said, I, I, have, I used to count on my, good, on my trying to keep the law and how well I lived and my, my obedience, you know, all of my things to please God. I used to count that. I don't count that. I threw all that away like a beggar's robe. I threw that away. 
I don't, I don't count on, I have no righteousness of my own. I have no righteousness of my own. The only righteousness I have, which is the righteousness of God by faith in Jesus Christ. He took your sin and you receive his righteousness. I get, there's something shoots through me. <laughs> Every time I, I even say that and I think about the magnificence, the mercy, the love of God that he would he would, this is the plan God came up with. This is his plan on how to justify sinners. God became a man. God became a man. And I, there was nothing I could do to save myself. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. So God became a man, lived a perfect life. And he died in my place. He died in your place. He, we could not save ourselves, he said, here, here, let this one go, let this one go, let Gary go now. I'm going to die in his place. You, I account my righteousness to him and his sin is mine and I'll die on the cross in his place. I don't get you, you lose words. The love of God. The simplicity of Christ and Him crucified. We don't ever want to lose in all of our understanding. We don't ever want to lose. He loves us. He is the one that came to save us. Salvation is His idea. He could have said, good enough for you. Just let them all burn in hell forever. No, He loves us. He became a man and came to save us. He rode into our death. <laughs> He took our sin upon himself and took it to hell where it belonged, but he paid the price. But then God raised him from the dead because the price has been paid and now it's time to start a new species. We're all gathered from that dead species of Adam, all right. Those that will believe this gospel, but everyone that does gets born again. We get raised from the dead. We get quickened to new life. God is creating a whole new species with Jesus as their Adam. Jesus, not 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 at not the first Adam. I don't have that sinful nature from him anymore. I have the very righteous nature of Christ Himself. This is the righteousness which is of God by faith. It's not only accounted righteousness that I like a robe, I do get that. We do get accounted righteousness. That's what Abraham had because he believed God. We also receive that because we believe God, but it's more than that because we get a new nature and that's what Abraham couldn't get. We get the nature of Christ. We're no longer sinners at our core. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We have been born again. Ephesians chapter 4 will tell you that new man on the inside, that new creature is created. And I mean from the get-go in righteousness and true holiness. That's who you are. That is who you are now. You are righteousness clothed in sinful flesh. There's always going to be a war between that new man, the real you on the inside and this, this fleshly body and, and uh, you know temptations of the flesh. But Jesus overcame the flesh by the light of life in him and we can overcame, overcome the flesh by the light of life in us. That's why in the book of Revelation, just read it for yourself sometime. All the rewards that come to he that overcomes. He that overcomes. He that overcomes over and over again. He that overcomes. We overcome the flesh, the world, and the devil. Hmm. But today I'm trying to stay focused on the Word. <laughs> Did you notice there in that message too, same thing. Peter talks about Jesus. He was, you killed him. He was slain, but God raised him from the dead. And really what he's saying, listen, he's saying this man is standing here whole by faith in his name, meaning Jesus is not dead. You killed him, but he's not dead. It's Christ is alive and still doing what he's always done. He's just doing it through us now. He's doing it through us. 
it's, we're doing this in his name. But it's still, it's the risen Christ. He didn't say it in this passage, but in Mark 16, it plainly tells us the Lord is working with this word, the word that he was slain for your transgressions. He was raised for your justification. He is glorified now and seated at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is alive. He is Lord in Christ. And he's still doing what he always did. He's going about doing good, healing those that are oppressed of the devil. This man was oppressed of the devil. He's born lame from his mother's womb. And the same Lord is alive and doing what he always did. Mm. The Lord is working with the Word. All right, let's go to the next one. Go to the next chapter, Acts chapter 4. And this is Peter speaking to the high priest after they were arrested and brought in to be examined because such a so many people were turning to Jesus. And so Peter answers the high priest and the council, and he says, If we are being examined regarding the good deed of the healing of the crippled man, how he was made whole, by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now here he's, this is really, I love how he says this. Remember now, Christ is not his last name. So he's really saying here, by the name of of Jesus, the Messiah, who came from Nazareth, whom you crucified, here it is, Christ and him crucified, whom God has raised from the dead. By him does this man stand here before you whole. Now, plain language, he's saying, this, that man that you killed is not in the grave. God has raised him from the dead he, is seat, he didn't say this, but he's seated at the right hand of God and he is alive and he is still doing what he's always done. It's by him, Jesus, this raised from the dead Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, by him is this man made whole. Mm. This is the stone which was rejected by the builders but has now become the cornerstone. Now get this, I love this. Salvation comes no other way. Oh, oh, oh man, salvation comes no other way. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby they must be saved. And he's talking directly to the very men who crucified Jesus. <laughs> there is no other name. This man whom you crucified he is now Lord of all. He is, he is alive, and he is seated at the right hand of God. Now, he didn't say it, but it's, the implication is clear. You're going to stand before him one day, this man that you crucified. <laughs> and there's no other name. You can't look somewhere else. You're going to have to reconcile with him, the same man that you crucified. There's salvation in no other. There's no other way. You're going to have to reconcile with him. Well, then they told him to. St they told him again. The, the the council and the high priest told him again to stop speaking or teaching in the name of Jesus. But then they answered well. They said, and this is Acts four verses nineteen and twenty. Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, you judge, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. In other words. They are witnesses, and they're going to keep saying what they've seen and heard. Now, Acts chapter 4, verses 29 through 31. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. By stretching, how, how is it? We want to be able to boldly speak your word. We're asking you to do something so that we can boldly speak it by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost 
and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now notice verse 33. And with great power, that's dunamis, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There, plain language for today. With great power gave the apostles witness that Jesus is alive. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the Messiah. He's not in the grave. He's not in the tomb. He has been raised from the dead. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is this Lord. He is Christ. And he is still doing the same things today that he did in his earthly body. Only now he's doing it through our bodies. We have become the very body of Christ. But notice there's an emphasis on the resurrection of the dead. Plain English, he's alive. And he's still doing what he's always done. He's still manifesting the kingdom of God. He's still going about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God is with him. But he's in us now. He is the vine. We t we, he, those of you that have been following these lessons for since last June know we started off with the seed, sower sows the word, and he took us through the vine. See, now he is the vine. We are the branches, and fruit appears on the branches, not the vine. He is the one right now seated at the right hand of God. But we are his branches on planet Earth, and it's here where the fruit of salvation is needed, the fruit of healing is needed, the fruit of deliverance is needed. The fruit appears on us, but we are the very body of Christ. This is the word. Now, here's an, let me just read this note that I wrote. Jesus has been raised from the dead. This was the major point of them preaching the word. It was Jesus who was doing the works through them, meaning he had come to life again after being put to death. The signs and the wonders proved he was still alive thus establishing all that Jesus had taught. It demonstrated that he was sent from God. By this evidence of the signs and the wonders, it verified the very word that they were preaching, that Jesus has been raised from the dead. And the results were that multitudes were converted to the Christian faith. And it'll be the same today. Recently, uh, this is uh, Feb we're still in February of 2023, and recently there was an outpouring of his presence at uh, a little university, Asbury University, in a little sleepy town in Wilmore, Kentucky, I think it is. <laughs> there weren't any great signs and wonders, really. It was not that type of a move. It was just his presence. And his presence came after a chapel service. And it was just being in his presence was so sweet. I heard kept the word sweetness. There was such a sweetness to the presence that came. People just didn't want to leave. And these are young people, most of them under 25, students. And they just didn't want to leave. And word started getting out. More people came. The little... I think they said that Hughes Hall holds 1,700 people and it overflowed. They had to have overflow rooms. And about two weeks later or so, there's 20,000 people from all over the nation, all over the world coming. 20,000 people coming to a town of 6,000 people. There's not even enough bathrooms in the whole town. <laughs> you know? So they've had to, to do so. But now the point I'm trying to make is, listen, just the manifestation of his presence. Just, oh, if I can just come and just sit, oh, if I can just feel him, just, oh, the peace, he loves me. Just to sit in his presence is enough to draw people from around the world in two weeks, <laughs> roughly two weeks. Think when the signs and the wonders break out. We're like this man, somebody born 
lame from their mother's womb, never has walked, and instantly they're healed by the power of the Lord Jesus and in His name. But the signs and the wonders, you know, again, I've taught that lesson many times from the book of Matthew. Seven different meetings that Jesus held. And I just stay in the book of Matthew so we're, no, we're not duplicating the same meeting again. Seven different times where he healed them all. This is Jesus. And the, the point of the word, the word they're preaching, he has not changed. He is alive today. Even though he was killed and buried, on the third day he was raised and he's seated at the right hand of the Father. He is Lord. He is the Messiah. And he is still doing the same things today that he did before. But he's doing it through us. Come, be saved. Come, be healed. Repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Oh, that's the word. That's the word. He is alive. Jesus is Lord. He's still doing the same things that he's always done, but he's doing it now through these many vessels instead of just one vessel. Hallelujah, but it's the same Jesus. There's only one Lord. He is Lord of all. Whew got me preaching now. <laughs> this is the word that he confirms with signs following. All right, let's go over to the next chapter, Acts chapter 5. <laughs> little Bible study is good for us once in a while. <laughs> so Acts chapter 5, we're going to look at verses 14 through 16 now. Believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one it's the same jesus he healed them all then when he was on earth in his own body and he's healing them all now through peter and other vessels because we we now have become the body of jesus christ but it is the same jesus working with and confirming the word with signs following it's not just a message of salvation. It's, that message also includes the healing. And Acts 10, we, have, we won't make it there today, but Acts 10, 38, everybody knew in that region what Jesus had done. It was no secret how Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And they're saying, they're saying now, it's that same Jesus. He's still going about doing good, healing all that are oppressed of the devil. God's still with him, but he's doing it through us now. He's doing it through these, his, we have become his body. Hallelujah. We have become his body, but it's the same Jesus. That's the, the word. This same Jesus is alive. The same one that you see in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he has not changed. He's still doing the same thing he's always done. And there is forgiveness of sins. If you'll repent and turn to him, receive him as your Savior and your Lord, you can have you, re, total forgiveness of your sins and a whole new life. Be born again. Start over with your, uh, a new life, empowered by God this time with the very nature, the righteousness of Jesus Christ, and you'll be able to live above sin. Glory to God. Glory to God. What a, what a, what a, what a gospel. What a word we have to present to the world. And he will work with and confirm that word with signs following. He, he's alive. He has not changed. Here's one of my notes. The fact that believers were the more added to the Lord multitudes of them means that the word was being preached that Jesus was the Son of God, Jesus has been raised from the dead, Jesus is both Lord and the Messiah, the signs and wonders for healings and the deliverance casting out those unclean spirits 
all demonstrated the fact that Jesus is alive, still doing through the people now what he had always done. Hmm. Wonderful. All right, let's go to come down just a little bit to verse 19, Acts 5, 19 and 20. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, now this is after they had been, uh, after that these great miracles and signs and wonders have been going on, they got arrested again. And this time they were put in prison. But an angel came, and that's what this is talking about in verse 19. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple. That's important. In the temple to the people all the words of this life. Now see, they had been put in prison and commanded, Don't you preach any more in this name of Jesus. We're telling you, don't you do it. Don't you do it. We're telling, don't preach it anymore. We're going to put you in prison. And they were going to hold them overnight and put them, bring them before the authorities again tomorrow. But during the night, this angel comes with a message from God, opens the prison doors, says, okay, they told you, you know, I'm paraphrasing, they told you to be quiet. I'm telling you, go to the most public place there is, the temple, and preach all the words of this life. Just teach it. All of it. Teach everything Jesus taught. Now, notes, my notes again. <laughs> when he said to them, go stand in the temple, meant preach in the most public place possible. <laughs> this is direct defiance from the authorities. They said, don't you preach at all anymore, anywhere. They're trying to get them to shut up, sit down, be quiet. They're trying to intimidate them. We're going to put you in prison. We're going to beat you. <laughs> We're going to take away your stuff. Whatever. We're telling you don't preach. And what's, what's the Lord's response to that? Hey, angel, go get them out. Tell them to preach more than they ever, stronger than they ever had before. Tell them to go. Not only are they not to be quiet, they're to go preach in the most public place in Jerusalem. Tell them to go preach in the temple. <laughs> they were to teach all the words, all the teachings of this eternal life that Jesus had taught them. And they were to teach the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They had been delivered from prison. <laughs> Let me say it. I'm sorry. They had not been delivered from prison so that they could go have a nice, safe, comfortable life and be quiet. <laughs> no. They had been delivered from danger to be exposed to more danger. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, now, after this, they were arrested again. So let's pick it up again in Acts chapter 5, verse 28 through 32, because you're, you're going to see them still preaching the same word. So Acts 5, starting in verse 28, they're standing before the council again, and the council's talking to them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold... You have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Trust me, it was already upon them. <laughs> Verse 29, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, Well, we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers. Here we go. He's preaching the word again. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him, they're still preaching Jesus, Him hath God exalted with His right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are His witnesses of these things. And so also is the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey Him. Man, these guys are bold. Men, the authorities there, Gary's notes again. These men in authority had commanded them not to teach or preach anymore in the name of Jesus. But God had commanded them by the voice of an angel to go into the temple, the most public place there is, and teach and preach all the words of this life. 
they were right to obey God and not man. And when they spoke again of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God not on, they, they were saying, God not only raised him from the dead, but has exalted him to his right hand to be the prince and a savior. In other words, he's the king of the kingdom. Because of this event, Israel could now repent and receive forgiveness of sins. See, the word they were preaching was still the same. This man, Jesus, whom you killed, God has raised him from the dead. He is both Lord and Christ. He is seated at the right hand of God. The very fact that these signs and wonders want to know how they're happening, he is doing it. He's still doing the same thing that he's always done. Only now he's doing it through us. But it's not us. It's him. <laughs> it's Christ in us. The hope of glory. Mm. <clears throat> See, the word was still the same. Jesus is the Son of God. He has been raised from the dead. The proof of the signs, the proof that he's raised from the dead is the signs and the wonders because it's him still doing what he's always done. I love how simple this is. Okay, well, can, this continues. We're going to, again, there's so much. It'll take up the whole time. Drop on down to verse 40. So they receive counsel here that uh, they should let them go. They only partially uh, submitted to the counsel of Gamaliel. See, because everybody knew that they had forbade them yesterday. They knew what, what had happened, that, that these men were forbidden. And they had defied the authority, so they couldn't just let them go. So, you know what they did? They let them go, but they beat them first. Look at this. Acts chapter 5, verse 40. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stop right there, Brother Gary. I want, I want the Lord to confirm what... When, I want Him to confirm the Word. I want to go preach the Word, and I want the Lord to confirm it with signs and wonders. And But I don't want any trouble. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean they beat what <laughs> what do you mean they beat them you mean they got persecuted and all they did was preach jesus and and the and and the lord worked signs and wonders through them and they were beaten what i'm not sure about that well get sure about it <laughs> acts chapter 5 verses 40 through 42 and to him they agreed that's talking about they, they agreed with Gamaliel, his counsel. There's just too much to include. We're almost out of time as it is. Now, when they had called the apostles, now notice, and beaten them. From, from what study is available to me, or from what I can research, this they received 39 stripes. That was the common uh, whipping for, uh, for the Jews, with 40 stripes less one. So they received 39 stripes. And only after, and they had to do something because these men had defied them. We said, we told you don't go preach. Well, what'd they do? They got out of prison. They went and preached in the temple. Well, they can't just let them go without something. So they beat them and they commanded them again that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Verse 41, and they departed from the presence of the council. Now, Get this, rejoicing <laughs> that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Gee, I wonder what they were preaching. This Jesus that they crucified, the one that was put on the cross, he's... He died for your sins. He was the Lamb of God. He, he certainly didn't die for his own sins. He didn't have any sins. No, no, no. He died in your place. But the price, the penalty has been paid because three days later, 
God raised him from the dead and he's seated at the right hand of God. This same Jesus is alive and well. If you'll repent of your sins, receive him as your Lord and Savior, you can have the very righteousness of God. You can, you can be born again, become God's child. You don't have to go to hell to pay for your own sins. He already paid for your sins. You can receive him as your Savior and be born again. And he's still the same today. He's alive. He'll save your soul. He'll heal your body. He'll <laughs> on and on and on. They're preaching Jesus Christ. Everything that Jesus taught. Remember, he told them in one of the places, he said, go and teach them everything that I taught you. Well, there they are. They're doing the same. You know, we got preachers today. And I don't want to get off on this. Let me look at the time. Hold on. I see we're four minutes. We, there are so many preachers today saying, that the words of Jesus Christ before the cross don't even apply to the Christian today. May God have mercy on their souls. I pray they repent. I pray they, God sh that somehow they're able to see the error of their ways. But there was never anything more false said on planet Earth. No, Jesus said, you go and you teach the nations. Actually, you go and teach them all. You teach them the same things I taught you. Whew. Glory to God. Let me finish up here with with these notes. You can tell I get excited about the gospel. Glory to God. So now notice that even after they were publicly beaten <clears throat> and threatened again not to speak in the name of Jesus, they continued daily in the temple and in every house to teach and preach Jesus Christ. It's the same word. They never changed their message. Jesus, here it is, Jesus is the Son of God who was killed on the cross. But God has raised him from the dead. He is alive and continuing to do the same works he always did. Just now he's doing it through the body of believers. Notice it says they continued, they continued to teach and to preach. There's a difference between teaching and preaching. Teaching is where they're teaching everything that Jesus taught, taught them. Preaching is where you exhort the people to believe it and act on it, whether it's to come forward to be saved, to believe God to be healed, and whatever. In addition to the foundational message, they were also teaching the doctrines, the teachings that Jesus taught them during his time on planet Earth. All right, let me look here. We've got two minutes. I'm going to have to jump. I'm going to jump ahead. I just want to show you this one. We'll get more into this. I want you to see that healing was included in this gospel message. We're going all, see, we're only in Acts chapter 5 there, right? Yes, Acts 5. Just for today, just to finish this one up, go all the way over to Acts 14 for a minute. I want to show you so clear that healing is included in this. When A lot of people, when they say Christ and Him crucified, they think it only means the salvation message. Well, it most certainly does mean the salvation being born again message. But this same gospel includes healing. So Acts chapter 14, look at verses 8 and 10. And there, now Paul is preaching. There said a certain man at a Lystra, that's a city, impotent in his feet. Now he also, being a cripple from his mother's womb. This is a birth defect who never had walked, never. Very similar to the, the lame man at the gate, beautiful. The same guy heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. Now notice it says Paul perceived that this man had faith to be healed. How did he get that faith? Let's see. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, who did he hear? Well, it says right here, this same heard Paul speak. That means Paul's message included not only can you be saved by the believing on Jesus Christ, but you can also be healed. And that's how the man received faith to be healed. Preaching the word 
And notice when he believed it and Paul gave him the command, the Lord worked with that word with a great sign following. And this man leaped and walked. It had such an impact on the city. They thought the I mean, they didn't know hardly anything yet. They thought the gods had come down to earth. Well, in a way he had, but it's not the gods they were thinking. It's Jesus who is Lord and Christ. If you've never asked him into your heart, let's do it, do it right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I understand better than I ever have. You are the Savior. Lord, I don't want to pay for my own sins. Not since you've already paid for them. Lord, I receive you. Come into my heart. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Make me into this new person. Lord Jesus, re I receive you and all that you did for me. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. I believe that God raised you from the dead. And from this day forward, I will do my best to follow you. I love you, Jesus. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.